Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our worship service this morning on this Thanksgiving weekend. No matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Whether visiting on, in person, online, uh, we are glad to have you with us today. And a lot of announcements to get to, so let me do that. Uh, please sign the registers, if you will, at this time. Uh, there's no doxology today. Um, I wish I could say that's a deep theological point, but it's more of a human error. Uh, so we won't be singing a, a doxology today. Uh, we have Brian, we have Thomas, and we have Ralph as our leaders today. So thank all three of, three of you for what you're doing. I must start today by saying uh, what a, an amazing week in the life of our church. Monday night, we had the radio play with uh, over 90, 100, maybe 110, 15 people here for that. And then on Friday, we had Friendsgiving with 50 or 60 people here for that. So it's been a, a wonderful week for us. And uh, it's just a reminder of if, uh, if you feel led to do something, just let us know. Uh, we are open to suggestions, and so one person can come up with uh, something that we all benefit from. Andrea has done that, Melissa's done that, and uh, others as well. And so uh, what a great week it was, thanks to all who participated in that. The announcements, uh, the mission for this month is Yavapai Food Bank and Coalition for Compassion and Justice. Keep those in mind, and also notice the amounts we've given to uh, various organizations, Prescott College's Freedom Education Fund, $350, UCC Strengthen the Church, $350, Neighbors in Need, $375, and Sow the Seed, $250. I mention those to you today because at the end of the sermon, remember this, uh, I'll be talking about uh, our collective efforts and uh, what they mean to uh, to everyone, all those uh, who receive help. Uh, this was to be Pete's last Sunday for his education opportunity, but they're going to extend one more week into next week, and so we thank Pete for doing that and Morgan for doing her meditation group as well. We have free church calendars available in Perkins Hall, Christmas cards also, and notice our next Prescott Area Shelter Services meal is December 20. Remember that during the sermon as well. I'll bring that up again. Uh, a couple of new things in your bulletin insert. We have uh, Akronite coming up. Akronite is uh, December 8th, and so uh, if you want to help with that, we're going to have woman song here, and uh, so there's an opportunity for you to take part and help out. And also, Christmas cookie candy exchange. So keep that in mind if you want to take part in that on December 17th. Also on December 17th, it's not in your bulletin insert, but we'll be uh, unveiling our gift from Manuel Lucero from uh, the Museum of Indigenous Peoples who gave us, remember, the, the feather. And so we've had it framed. We're going to hang it up here next to one of our sand paintings in Perkins Hall. And so we're going to do that on the 17th as well. Still receiving uh, stewardship campaign estimates of giving. Keep that in mind. You see at the bottom our services on Christmas Eve, one of those unusual days where Christmas Eve is on a Sunday, so we do both morning and night services. And then on the back, we have pictures to give thanks for those who helped to decorate the church. Uh, there's a a question for you, how many members of the church does it take to hang a wreath? <laughs> so see if you can figure that out. Uh, we're, we're not going to be turning this into our insurance company, that picture, by the way. It doesn't look good, but thanks to all who took part in that. And then our radio play. We, we have a picture there of the crowd and the people in the play. You'll recognize most of them. And so a lot, a lot going on that past week. Let us stand and greet one another with the peace of Christ.
clapping hands and happy sounds, we make a joyful noise unto the Lord. With clapping hands and happy sounds, we make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Shout to God with a voice of joy, the Lord is King of all the earth. Clap your hands, sing praise to God. Sing praise to our God, sing praise. With clapping hands and happy sounds, we make a joyful noise unto the Lord. With clapping hands and happy sounds, we make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Mountains and hills sing praises, the rivers clap their hands. Mighty seas roar out their joy. The earth breaks out into song. With clapping hands and happy sounds, we make a joyful noise unto the Lord. With clapping hands and happy sounds, we make a joyful noise unto the Lord. We make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All right. Thank you very much. That was great. Appreciate that. I'm glad to have a signing today. Welcome to our special group. Appreciate you being with us today. Well, it is time for the children's time, and JJ seems to have brought something with him. So let's see what he's got here. Huh. What did he bring? And he, chick. And a chick, yeah, some little chicks. Yeah. Why is it blue? Why is it blue? <laughs> <laughs> Must be the lighting. I don't know. So uh, what does a little chick do? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, they grow up, right? What do they sound like? Yeah. Wow, somebody's actually doing it. Where's that coming from? <laughs> We have a real live chicken up here. I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. So the reason I brought these today is the church has bought a flock of chicks in your honor with uh, Heifer International. You maybe never heard of this organization, but what they do, instead of giving money to people in need, they give them animals. You can get a cow, you can get a goat, and all these kind of things. And so the church, and I'm going to give this to you. This is from the church to the First Congregational Children. And why would you want to give a flock of chicks to somebody? As a gift. And, and what would they do other than squawk and run around? And... Yeah. They grow older, you can eat them. That, that is a true statement. But before that, what, what might they do that would be helpful? <laughs> they lay eggs, yeah. So um, it actually says in here, I was surprised by how many. So one hen can lay more than 200 eggs a year, making it an egg-cellent gift. <laughs> so... We bought a flock of chicks in your honor, and so someone in the world is going to receive these little chicks. They're going to raise them. They're going to benefit from the eggs that the chicks lay. They can probably sell some of those, right? And so they can actually get more and more chickens if they want. And so that little gift will expand and become very important in all of these people's lives. If you don't know about Heifer International, it is uh, an organization that uh, has been doing this for a long time. But you can, if you want to go uh, really extravagant, you can get a gift ark for $5,000. So, but they have all kinds of stuff that you can uh, buy and, and give, tax, deducti tax deductible. And so, uh, yeah, a simple way to give. Remember that during the sermon. That'll be coming back. 
All right, thank you for being here on this Thanksgiving weekend. We got a lot to be thankful for, including all of you. So let's pray. Thank you, God, for our children, our teachers. Because of them, these little chicks have been purchased and they will benefit somebody in the world. And so just by the simple act of being here today, they have made that happen. So bless them, bless our teachers, be with them throughout this day. Through Christ we pray, amen. All right, thanks. Uh, let's get to... I was giving them the holiday off so they didn't have to say anything today. response to our call to worship. Know that Holy One is God. We are God's people. Worship the Holy One with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Enter God's gate and with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. Make a joyful noise. For God is good. God is steadfast love endures forever and God's faithfulness to all generations. Let us worship with thanks and joy. Let us praise God in song, word, and prayer. Now please jo join me in the opening prayer. Holy One, enthroned in glory over all creation, you are a shepherd to the lost and the least. Teach us to see your face among the poor feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, welcoming the stranger, clothing the naked, and visiting those who are sick or in prison so that we may share in your eternal realm prepared from the foundation of the world through Jesus Christ, who is coming indeed to reign with justice, compassion, and love. Please stand if you are able. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please stand if you are able and join us singing the hymn like Mother Who Has Born Us in the New Century Hymnal 583.
Please be seated. Today's gospel is Matthew 25, chapters 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will gather before him, and he will separate people from one another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come you that are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did, to one of the least of these who are the members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked, you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Let us stand together and oh, sing, won't you let, let me stand be and sing. your servant? <laughs> <laughs>
Please be seated. Well, how, how are you all today on this last Sunday of the year? Might seem rather odd, but uh, we follow the Christian calendar, the liturgical calendar, and this is the last Sunday of the year. It has been known as Christ the King Sunday, lately Christ uh, the Reign of Christ Sunday, but uh, it was put in place by a pope back in the 1920s because uh, looking at the world at that time and all of the leaders of the countries who were not being very servant-like in their leadership, the Pope thought, let's institute this day and they'll look at how Jesus led and maybe that'll help them to change a little bit. Well, it hasn't worked, uh, basically. <laughs> but it is a reminder to us about the right kind of leadership uh, and so we have this day every year right before the start of Advent. So those of you who may not be familiar with the liturgical calendar, let me quickly go through it. So we've had the season of Pentecost, which goes on forever. <laughs> and finally is coming to an end, and we have Christ the King, or the Reign of Christ Sunday. And next week we start Advent, which will change to blue. We'll have blue colors, and that is our march toward Christmas, Advent, a time of preparation. So that makes sense. And then after Christmas, we go to the season of Epiphany, which doesn't get a whole lot of attention or maybe it's not known as much. But uh, Epiphanies, you know, are manifestations, right, of, of the light shining. And so it's meant to shine a light on Jesus for that season and who he was and is. And then at the end of the season of Epiphany, we come to the season of Lent, which most people know. We turn to purple. And uh, we march toward Easter. And then Easter, we change to white, and we have a glorious Easter. And then we come all the way to the end of the Easter season with uh, Pentecost, the birthday of the church. And then we start that long, long green time as we go through the summer months to get back to here. So that is the Christian year. And you might wonder, why in the world do you do that? Well. It's really a way of following Jesus, right? It's uh, following his life from beginning, to birth, to death, to resurrection, and all the way through and all of his teachings during the, the season of uh, uh, the, the season we have leading up to this one. So anyway, uh, just a little education there in case you didn't know all of that. And yes, this is the last Sunday of the year. Okay. And on the last Sunday of the year, we always look at uh, these pictures of Jesus in glory as the reigning king or the, the patriarch over everything. And Matthew gives us this parable of the sheep and the goats. A lot of people know this, even if they don't know much about the Bible. They may have heard this before, uh, that the sheep and the goats represent, you know, the ones that did what Jesus asked them to do, and the goats did not. And then in Matthew's great way, they're sent off into punishment and fire and gnashing of teeth. We've been over that in recent weeks. Matthew seems to like this judgment stuff, and much more than the other Gospels, and so he will give this to us. Uh, but it is kind of a dualism that was prominent back then, I'm sure, and still is in a lot of circles, that uh, things are either or. Right? You're either a sheep or you're a goat. There's no in-between. One is good, one is bad, and, and that's it. I tend to look at this parable and think of myself as a combination. Sometimes I'm a sheep, sometimes I'm a goat. And uh, notice the two sides are both surprised in the end, and so you really can't tell. You can't tell where you are. And so I like that interpretation better and not to think about, you know, separating sheep and goats, and, and that's it. So a uh, little introduction there as well. But the great thing about this passage is that we are given the answers to the test. You remember those classes you took maybe earlier in life where the teacher would stand up and say, now this is what's going to be on the test. And, you know, so you'd be back there marking it down and, makes it pretty easy if she gives you the answers to the test in advance. Well, here you have the answers to the test. So let me share them with you. I was hungry and you fed me. 
I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me. And I was in prison and you visited me. Well, there you go. So all you got to do is go home, make a little list, and check off these boxes, and you will be a sheep. Well, <laughs> that may not be exactly right. Uh, remember Matthew uh, gives us Jesus saying, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing in terms of the good that you do. And Matthew also said through Jesus that a good tree will produce good fruit. And so most people will say that Matthew is not giving us some simple little checkbox list here. If you do this, you're a sheep. It's really meant to show what people who are really the followers of Jesus do. And notice that there's surprise. The main feature of this parable is the surprise of both sides. This story is found in both uh, Judaism and Islam, similar kind of stories. But Jesus adds, adds this little wrinkle to it that in the end, they're surprised that things turned out the way they did. The surprise of the goats, the surprise of the sheep. You know, one of the things that uh, is also in this parable, which many point out today, because we live in a time where followers of Jesus and all of the churches are forever splitting up over something that they believe. And for many Christians, what you believe is more important than anything. And so they're now dividing themselves about uh, LGBTQ issues happening in the Methodist Church right now, happening in the Presbyterians, the Lutherans, the Episcopalians. And what you believe is most important. Do you see anything about believing in this parable? Hmm, interesting. You know, during our uh, study on Saturday morning, the Faith Forum, we've covered I don't know how many historical things to do with the church, and we've learned through the months that the early believers, let's say the first, second century, third, fourth century, all the way up, didn't have the whole Bible, right? They, they lived in an area, maybe they had one gospel, and uh, maybe they had a couple other letters, but they never had this collection of 66 books that we now have. And so we often would comment on Saturday morning, you know, if believing was that important, uh, you'd think you'd want to drop the document right at once to everybody in the whole world, help them to read immediately, and then they could all have the same knowledge and believe the right way. That wasn't the case for centuries. And so, hmm, here in the parable, what you believe doesn't seem as important as what you do, although Matthew again would say, well, what you're doing is based on the fact that you're a good tree <laughs> and you're doing what uh, you ought to be doing. Uh, but it's just an interesting little aside, I think, to this story that reminds us, uh, huh, maybe this focus we have on having the right beliefs is not as important as how we live. And that's what the parable seems to be suggesting to us. Well, the surprise is what I want to focus on as uh, we think more about this parable. The surprise. Hmm. You remember George Bailey just Monday night? George Bailey who wished that he had never been born. And the angel Clara? <laughs> oh no, it was Clarence, but we had Clara. The angel Clara granted his wish. And so he got to see what would happen if he had never been born. All the things that he did that were good, all the bad things that happened because he was never born, and how much his individual life made such a difference. That's really this parable in a nutshell. We just don't know. We'll be surprised at what happens in the end when our life is reviewed and all these little things that 
we never thought about uh, became real. Thornton Wilder wrote a play called Our Town. It comes from 1938. It actually has a congregational church in it, of all things. Uh, but it's a play about Emily, who in the end dies, dies in childbirth. And after she dies, she asks the stage director, who's the one that's leading the whole play, let me come back just for one day. I want to live one more day in my life and see what it was like. And so the stage director grants the wish, even though everybody else tells her, you're not going to enjoy it, don't do it. But she does it. And so here's what happens. Emily returns to Earth to relive one day, her 12th birthday. She joyfully watches her parents and some of the people of her childhood for the first time in years, but her joy quickly turns to pain as she realizes how little people appreciate the simple joys of life. The memory proves too painful for her, and she realizes that every moment of life should be treasured. When she asks the stage manager if anyone truly understands the value of life while they live it, he responds, no, the saints and poets maybe, they do some. Emily returns to the grave and watches as people weep over her. The play is about how we live life and we really don't experience it about the importance of all the things that go, kind of just go right by us. She actually asks in the play, uh, do people, are do people just ignorant? And the stage manager says, pretty much. They, they don't understand most of what's going on. The surprise, the little things that had been done. And so I got to imagining as I prepared for today, huh, What about the simple gesture I did of this uh, flock of chicks that the church gave to the children today? I wonder if that will be brought up. Imagine that. So the children came today. They had no knowledge this was going to happen, but they came. And because they came, this happened. And because they came, these chicks will now go out into the world somewhere and help somebody. I promise you, 40, 50 years from now, they will not remember this at all. <laughs> ah, but it will be recorded, right? And they'll be surprised someday to think, wow, uh, when did I do that? And you did it to one of the least, you did it to me. Huh. Or think about all the other things. Your presence here today. Our mission committee keeps us going on giving to different projects. Imagine you get to this final judgment and you're told, you know, you helped, uh, gosh, you helped a, a, a student over at college. You helped somebody who needed help out in the community. All of these different organizations, you did that. And you'll say, when did I do that? I don't know. You did it because you're here. You did it because you're taking part. You could easily be at home, <laughs> sleeping, watching TV, never taking part in community. But these little gestures that we don't even think about have an, a profound impact, I think, and are part of what Jesus is getting at here. It doesn't have to be some massive thing that we do. It's just simple things every day. We welcome a stranger. We give some food. We give somebody something to take care of their thirst. We go visit somebody in the hospital. We think about and care about and perhaps visit a prisoner along the way. All these things are just simple gestures, but they come up at the end as that which was done for Christ, done for Jesus. And they become that which judges in the end. So don't be surprised today as you go about your life in some way that you're not even going to understand or remember, we're just too ignorant to know, that you're going to do something 
that is a ministry to Jesus because it's done to the least of these. May God help us perhaps not to even know that because our right hand isn't supposed to know what our left hand is doing. But just remember that as you live your life that like George Bailey, you may not think you have much going on, but in the end, you really do. And God is thankful for your being a part of his people on this earth. Amen. We invite you to join in singing the refrain to the anthem, which is printed in your bulletin, Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. And Ralph will signal when, you, when to sing each time. I'll remember. anxious you calmed all my fears now enter into the kingdom of heaven whatsoever you do to the least of my people that you do unto me What if all the prayers that you pray are part of the things you did unto Jesus? What if all the people you prayed for become part of that? Just simple gestures, but maybe they're collected and remembered and they made a difference. You never know. So we gather here together to pray to share our prayers with God and to pray for others who need our prayers. We continue to pray today for uh, Israel and Gaza, the solution coming to that for those who have been taken uh, in hostages. We pray for Ukraine and what's going on there and Sudan and I could list probably 20, maybe I should someday, uh, list all the places where people are, are suffering. But we have an opportunity to pray. And maybe that simple gesture means, a, means something, makes a difference, and will be remembered. You bring with you your requests as well today, and so let us join together in prayer. Oh God, help us to take from today the importance of our life, both the good that we do and sometimes the sins of omission, those things that we could have done and didn't do. We pray for that forgiveness all the time, but help us to appreciate the importance of even the little things that we do, 
the words said to encourage children and teenagers, uh, the words of love that we share with one another, the encouragement given, the food given, uh, the welcoming given, whatever it is. In so many ways, they're just simple little things, but they're important to you, and actually, Jesus is there before us. On this Thanksgiving weekend, that's a great thing for us to remember and to go forth and give, give of ourselves, give of our time and talent and treasure. And so we lift up to you now the unspoken requests that we bring, uh, be at work in each situation. Help us to appreciate that you are listening and that you are involved. And we lift up to you our world and grieve over what's going on and collectively with the people of the world we pray for peace to come to so many places. And we share the ancient prayer, how long, O oh Lord, and on this special day we remember one of the great things about this Reign of Christ Sunday is that someday all of this will be behind us and that peace and justice will come. And we pray for that day. We thank you for Dorothy Potter continuing to do well, for Elena continuing to do well, for others on our hearts who need you as the great physician. We pray for your healing to be theirs. And now we lift up to you all of these requests in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. What if since 1880, the record has been kept of everyone who's ever been here, part of this church family, worshipped here, gave here, made all of this possible? What if that record is kept and shared someday as a part of their evaluation? Maybe it is. And so today we ask all of you to take part in this continuing project of our church. We continue to be here. We continue to welcome the stranger and to uh, give to others as we can. And so we will receive our morning offering today. We are still receiving estimates of giving. We have slips back there if you'd like to receive one. And a uh, reminder, no doxology today. So a little bit of different service for you, but uh, we will uh, now receive our morning offering.
prayer of dedication. We thank you for the many gifts in our lives. Call us into a life full of gratitude that we may recognize the blessings around us and within us, that we might give out these blessings to bless others. May we live in your ways that we might be reconciled to the earth, to others, and to you. In all that we do, in the name of Christ, we give thanks to offer our prayers. Amen. And let us stand and sing together, children of God, in the sing prayer and praise hymn, the 195. Thank you all for joining us today. We have our time of fellowship next door. We invite you to that. I actually gave you about seven extra minutes today, so you know you got time to come next door and have something. <laughs> that was a uh, holiday weekend treat. I wanted you to have a shorter service. We do have communion down front if you want to receive that today, thanks to Tom. And so please, after the service, just feel free to come at your convenience uh, down front. Uh, and this is the bread of life, the cup of salvation for us. The ministry of the Spirit uh, becomes food for our journey. And so please uh, partake if you want. Well, what if, as you leave today, you do some things you don't even know about that are going to make a difference in somebody's life and Jesus was actually there? So I'm going to give you a chance to share that uh, as you leave today. And so as you're going out the door, just casually say to someone, you look amazing today. <laughs> and uh, you'll make their day. That will fulfill the sermon right there. Well, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you. Amen.